So, I'm guessing you've already heard at least a few things about diabetes. Why? Well, right now there are almost 30 million people in America alone who have diabetes. That's nearly 10% of the population. And each year approximately 2 million more people get diagnosed with diabetes. But there's actually a lot of misconceptions when it comes to this disease. So everything you think you know about diabetes might actually be wrong. Hey guys, I'm Judd, co-founder of Diabetes Smarts, and welcome to another Diabetes Smarts discussion. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment below if you're so inclined. You'll also find two free gifts waiting just for you if you click the link in the description below. More on that later. But today we're talking all about diabetes myths, and we're about to debunk them just for you. But first, do you even know what diabetes is exactly? It can be confusing. Trust me, I know. I've spent a couple years now studying this condition and talking to some of the world's leading doctors, nutritionists, and physical fitness experts. And I still sometimes have difficulty making sense of type 2 diabetes. So I'm going to let our experts give you a quick lowdown about the ins and outs of diabetes. Well, what diabetes means is it means that your blood sugar is too high. And it's actually a whole spectrum of diseases. There's a lot of ways you can get too high blood sugar. And so we like to think of it these days as a spectrum. And so on one end of the spectrum, you have classic type 2 diabetes. And that's the kind of diabetes that adults traditionally got. We used to call type 2 adult onset diabetes. And in this kind of diabetes, people are making insulin. Their bodies just don't respond to it very well. They're resistant to it. So they're making it, don't respond well, they get high blood sugar. On the other end of the spectrum, you have classic type 1 diabetes. That's what kids traditionally got. That's what um, they used to call juvenile onset diabetes. But what they all have in common is the blood sugar is too high. So whenever we eat our food, our body digests it, breaks it down eventually to glucose or sugar. It goes into the bloodstream and then it's supposed to go from the bloodstream to the cells and that's where we get our energy. In order for the glucose or sugar to get from the bloodstream to the cells, you need this hormone called insulin. It kind of opens the door and lets the, the glucose in. With type 1, the problem is there's just not enough insulin there, so there's no one to get up and open the door. With type 2, the initial problem is what we call insulin resistance, meaning there's insulin there, it doesn't work as well, so you need more insulin to kind of allow the glucose in. The body can initially supply that by just making more insulin. Eventually, it gets to the point where it can't keep up with the demand, and that's when you have diabetes. High blood glucose levels over time can be damaging to a number of body parts, like heart problems, kidney problems, those kind of things. Those are the, what we call the long-term chronic complications of, of diabetes. Well, they, the statistics say there's 29 to 30 million people with diabetes and one-third don't know it. They're referring to not type 1 diabetes, but to primarily type 2 diabetes. And the most common symptom, ready for this, is none. There are no symptoms in the early stages. And that's why screening is so important if, if type 2 diabetes runs in the family. The most common way someone with type 2 diabetes is diagnosed is by a routine physical, and they didn't even know it. But if it's undiagnosed for a long time, and some estimates are 5 to 10 years, that's an important time period where you can be starting therapy. Once you get to a stage where you know people are really going downhill, you know, thirsty, urination, blurry vision, if it gets really bad weight loss, you can also go into this condition called ketoacidosis. And these are all the symptoms that type ones get very quickly, very uh, uh, early on. But let's just say you have type two diabetes, it's undiagnosed, you know, you don't feel that great, but you don't feel that bad. Uh, and then all of a sudden you have a medical stress, heart attack, infection, that could throw you over the edge and make your blood sugar shoot up. And that's when people are also diagnosed, when they're admitted for some other problem. There you go. That's diabetes in a nutshell. And later in this video, we'll let you in on some very important but little known reasons why you may become diagnosed with diabetes. But now, are you ready to have some of the world's biggest misconceptions about diabetes revealed to you? Well, let's get to it. Diabetes myth number seven. 
there are no symptoms or early warning signs for diabetes. Many people are shocked when they receive a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. How is this possible? I didn't have any symptoms, they might say. But if you pay attention to your body and your overall health, you can actually find many early warning signs of diabetes. Like, for instance, frequent dehydration and frequent urination. Are you constantly thirsty? Do you find yourself getting up once, twice, or even three times to go to the bathroom or to get a drink of water in the middle of the night? Prolonged high blood sugar levels are a symptom of diabetes, and when your body must deal with large amounts of sugar floating around in your bloodstream, it may try to remedy the situation by pushing this excess sugar out through your urine. When that happens, you'll find yourself going to the bathroom more than usual, and then you may find yourself becoming frequently dehydrated. You may also start feeling thirsty much more than usual. Other diabetes warning signs include frequent tiredness or exhaustion, constant hunger pangs, and even losing weight without making changes to your diet can be a sign of diabetes. The early warning signs for type 1 and type 2 diabetes are virtually the same, except these warning signs will be much more prevalent and hit you much more quickly for type 1 diabetes. But no matter what, if you are experiencing any of these symptoms, it's best to see your doctor and get tested. Diabetes myth number six. You can only get diabetes if you are overweight. Yes, putting on the pounds, especially in your belly region, will increase your risk for getting type 2 diabetes. But the reality is that not everyone who's overweight has type 2 diabetes, and not every type 2 diabetic is overweight. There are a ton of factors that go into a diabetes diagnosis. Genetics, your environment, your stress levels are just a few. So don't go thinking that just because you don't have a beer belly, that means you aren't in danger of developing diabetes. First of all, look at your family history. Do you have any grandparents, aunts or uncles, cousins, even any parents who are diabetic? Both type 1 and type 2 diabetes has a genetic component especially type 2 diabetes. So study the roots of your family tree to understand which diseases you may be at risk for developing. Secondly, what's your daily life like? Are you eating only processed foods on the go, stressing about work, coming home, eating a huge meal, and going straight to bed? You may be at a healthy weight, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you are healthy. Factors like the medications you're taking, the foods you're eating, and the anxiety you're feeling can all add to your diabetes risk. Diabetes myth number five. Diabetics should replace sugary snacks with sugar-free alternatives. Do you find yourself avoiding the cookie aisle at your grocery store, but stopping when you see those sugar-free products? Yes, I can eat this, you may exclaim. Hey, that's cool. <laughs> Go ahead and get excited about snacks. I know I do. But hit pause on that excitement just a bit because sugar-free does not mean healthier. When a company puts words like sugar-free or low sugar on their products, I'm sorry guys, but this is just a marketing technique. The food company wants to trick you into thinking that their product is healthier but just as delicious as their full sugar version. So how do they do that? Simple. They replace the sugar with more salt and more fat. In fact, any food product that claims to be low on anything, from salt to fat to, yes, sugar, means that they've just added more of something else just as, if not more, unhealthy for your body. And many of these so-called sugar-free products contain artificial sweeteners. Did you know that artificial sweeteners like saccharin and aspartame are actually several times sweeter than natural sugar? It's crazy, but it's true. And what happens when you train your taste buds to eat artificial sweeteners? Then natural sugars just don't seem sweet enough for you anymore, and so you might either find yourself inadvertently eating more food than usual to capture that amount of sweetness you're craving, or you may become addicted to artificial sugar products, which, of course, tend to contain other unhealthy chemicals. Plus, artificial sweeteners are so sweet 
that they trick your body into producing too much insulin. Sure, you won't have excess sugar floating around in your bloodstream, but you will be putting a strain on your pancreas as it churns out more insulin. So, the more artificial sweeteners a diabetic consumes, the worse it might end up making their condition. If you want a healthy snack, best to go for whole fruits, vegetables, and nuts. It may sound boring, but fruits, vegetables, and nuts still contain large helpings of sugar. So, whether you believe it or not, they'll be sweet to your taste buds and supply you with the flavor you're craving and the energy your body needs. Very importantly though, they also contain beneficial nutrients, vitamins, and perhaps most importantly for diabetics, they contain fiber. Fiber helps slow the release of insulin into your bloodstream, and this can make a world of difference to your short and long-term health. So, ditch the processed packaged foods and pick up those natural fiber-rich treats instead. We're going to debunk the top four diabetes myths in just a sec, but first I wanted to let you know about the first of our two free gifts we're giving away right now. Have you ever wanted to know exactly which foods are great for your blood sugar control, weight management, and overall health, and how to implement them into your everyday meals? And have you ever wondered which foods are secretly causing damage to your body? The new book, Superfoods for Diabetics, has these answers and more. All you gotta do to receive your free copy of Superfoods for Diabetics is click the link in the description below. Coming up, I'm gonna tell you about another awesome free gift, so stay tuned. Okay, on to diabetes myth number four. Every diabetic needs prescription insulin. So here's where a main difference between type one and type two diabetes comes into play. To have type 1 diabetes means that your pancreas is producing little to no insulin naturally, and we need insulin to survive. Insulin is like a key which lets glucose, or blood sugar, into your cells, and glucose is food for your cells. So type 1 diabetics must be prescribed prescription insulin by their doctors. Until a cure is found for type 1 diabetes, people affected with this condition will have to take prescription insulin. But that doesn't mean that a type 1 diabetic will have to take an ever-increasing amount of insulin as they get older. More on that topic in a sec. But when it comes to type 2 diabetes, millions of type 2 diabetics have learned to regulate their blood sugar levels through a balanced diet, moderate levels of exercise, and by living an overall healthy lifestyle. For a type 2 diabetic to be prescribed insulin, that usually means that his or her condition has gotten progressively worse over many years, to the point that, just like with type 1 diabetics, their pancreases essentially burn out. The good news is that you have to try extremely hard, and by that I mean treat your body like to get to that point if you're type 2 diabetic. If you put some time, energy, thought, and willpower into your everyday lifestyle and eating habits, you should be able to avoid that insulin prescription. But just like life itself, this is an ongoing, unending battle. If you think you're healthy enough to go back to eating only processed junk foods and sitting on the couch all day long, you're definitely going to hurt your health and reduce your insulin sensitivity. And yeah, you may find your doctor writing you a script for insulin. Diabetes myths numbers three to one are about to get exploded before your very eyes. And coming up, I'm going to introduce you to a very special person named Rachel. She used to be type two diabetic. That's right, you heard me, used to. She'll give us the inside scoop about how she transformed her body and her life and is now living free of diabetes symptoms and complications. So stay tuned to meet Rachel. You won't want to miss her inspiring story. And now, on to diabetes myth number three. Diabetics should avoid all sugar. Incorrect. In fact, sugar is essential to every human on the planet. It's just that you may have to change your understanding of what sugar is exactly. Carbohydrates are sugar. And carbs come from more than just chips, sodas, and pastas. See this? Plenty of sugar in here. And you'll get a good amount of sugar from this too. What matters isn't cutting down on sugar. It's more about cutting back on certain types of sugar. 
the sugar you get from packaged treats like cookies, ice cream, potato chips, white bread, flour pastas, and especially soda is what is called simple sugar. They are monosaccharides, meaning they are the most basic form of carbohydrate. Without the benefit of fiber you get from fruits and vegetables, simple sugar snacks flood your system with glucose, spike your blood sugar, and overload your liver. In fact, the simple sugar fructose, found in those sorts of treats like sodas and chips, goes straight to your liver and is converted directly to fat. So, even though those energy drinks claim that the sugar inside will feed your cells that needed quick burst of energy, what's really happening is that all that sugar is just being converted directly into fat. So yeah, avoid those simple sugars, definitely. But you still need healthy, complex carbohydrates because every cell in your body is powered by carbs. So no matter what, you still need to eat foods which contain sugar each and every day. The trick is to eat healthier forms of sugar from those natural sources like fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Meanwhile, a healthy way to eat sugary foods without getting blood sugar spikes is to pair these foods with protein. Protein helps stabilize your glucose levels. So if you do find yourself wanting a chocolate dessert, Make sure your dinner includes some amount of healthy protein from foods like fish, chicken, eggs, nuts, seeds, even mozzarella cheese. And also remember that sugary snacks are quote unquote bad for everyone, not just diabetics. But those who do well with sugary treats have learned to make it just that, treats. So practice moderation. Go ahead and have a slice of cake at a friend's birthday party. Just try to avoid eating the whole cake and make it a habit to save these treats just for special occasions. So dump the white bread. Go for those fiber rich whole grain breads instead. Ditch the chips. Grab a few baby carrots. Have that chocolate ice cream. Just make it one scoop instead of three. Getting the idea? Good. Diabetes myth number two. There is a specific diabetes diet everyone should follow. No, diabetes is not a one-size-fits-all condition. It affects us all differently, just like a food I eat might affect me differently than it affects you. Many people have found lasting success by following certain plans like the keto diet or becoming vegetarian or even vegan. And if it works for them, great. Doesn't mean it will work for you though. So. Don't buy into any books or videos telling you that they have the strict plan that will definitely solve your diabetes dilemma. Whatever their advice, it may have worked for one or even many people, but your body is unique. You have to find what works best for you. And the only way to do that is to experiment and take notes. How? First of all, get a glucometer. It measures the blood sugar levels in your system. Track your levels before and after each meal. Take notes of exactly what you ate over a month-long period, and then you can look back and see how certain foods might have affected your glucose levels. Some people find that eating corn spikes their blood sugar, but others can eat a ton of corn with ease. Certain diabetics have tried intermittent fasting, where they go several hours between meals, and it has helped control their blood sugar levels, but other diabetics have found that their blood sugar has dropped to harmful levels when they try this tactic. Doctors and nutritionists can give you great advice and meal plans, but in the end, it's up to you to figure out what works best for your body. Diabetes myth number one is coming up, but first it's time to let you in on that second free gift. So even if you haven't guessed already, even though I'm talking to you about diabetes, I'm not a doctor. I'm a filmmaker who happened to be gravely concerned about my health and the health of my friends and family, especially after my own father told me he was diagnosed with pre-diabetes. So I started looking around for videos and documentaries about diabetes, and I was shocked to discover that there's really not that much out there. So I decided to do it myself. I've spent over three years traveling around the world interviewing doctors, nutritionists, physical fitness experts, type 1, type 2, 
pre-diabetics, and even former diabetics to learn the secrets behind the exploding rates of diabetes. What I discovered changed my health and my life, and now I want to share that knowledge with you. I've put these insights into an eight-part series called That Diabetes Documentary. And right now, you can watch the premiere episode for free. That Diabetes Documentary and Superfoods for Diabetics are both part of the Comprehensive Diabetes Smarts program. So check out this entire program and get both of these amazing free gifts right now just by clicking the link in the description below. All right, ready to have the top diabetes myth debunked right before your very eyes? Here we go. Diabetes myth number one. Diabetes will only get worse with time and cannot be reversed. Meet Rachel. She's living proof that it is possible for a type 2 diabetic to change their lifestyle, lose weight, and lower their blood sugar levels to below the diabetic threshold. And most importantly, maintain this new healthy lifestyle for the rest of their life. Hi, I'm Rachel Woodrow. Uh, I used to be a type 2 diabetic. When I first was diagnosed, I had a reading of 81 and I have reduced that down to, on my last test, 33. So I no longer have type 2 diabetes. I was pretty miserable, I was really quite big. I think I was depressed and very tired and just sort of making the motions to get through life at that time. I just thought that was maybe being 39, but now I can tell you it's not being 39. It's been really ill. I remember one day standing at the cupboard and stuffing in chocolate biscuits in my mouth and thinking, I hate myself. Why am I doing this? Why can't I stop doing this? And it occurred to me, I'm addicted to this stuff. So I made myself a deal that for 90 days I wouldn't touch anything that had processed sugar in it. And I just set myself a goal and I went for it. And at the end of the 90 days, I wasn't addicted to sugar anymore. So I just got that out of my life and that immediately made a huge difference to my health and to the ability to keep on track. Because often you'll be diet, 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 diet. I'm doing really great. Blow out on sugar and it's undone within minutes. I exercise six times a week and I just get up, get it done. And then I eat clean all day. I don't give diabetes a thought. We rest and repeat. So it's all about clean eating for me and getting that exercise in. There's so many costs in the health industry that we need to get past that and have a look and go, what can we just do in our everyday life to just drop our portions, increase our exercise, look around, there's parks everywhere, there's hills to climb, there's places to see. You don't have to stand on a treadmill or, you know, buy the lean cuts of beef to make your fancy meal so that you like eating again. Food is, to me, a fuel. It's to fuel your body. And what goes in your body is what you're going to get back out of your body. So each individual has to sit down and work out what they do, what they need to put in and what makes them feel best. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. I've moved from walking to hill climbing to um, some aerobic sessions, to hit sessions, in my own lounge, wearing whatever I want to wear, my pyjamas, whatever. Just keep progressing. If you like it, try it. So I always have goals, and there's always goals that are food-related, behaviour-related, exercise-related. I kind of like to think of it as playing games, but they're, they're healthy games. If you have type 2 diabetes and you work on it and you set your goals and you start achieving things I wish I could show you where you'd be in six months time because I was sure my life was over and that it was only going to get more painful more tiring and I was never going to leave the country and I was never going to leave my house but just by achieving the things I've achieved has opened so many doors for me every time you you move forward, another door will open and it leads to another door. You don't have to stay where you are and stuck in your diagnosis. Things will happen for you, just like they did for me. And you can do this.
Big thanks to Rachel for telling us her inspiring story. So yes, when a doctor says that diabetes is a progressive disease and will only get worse with time, this is true. But only if you do nothing about your condition. Sure, if you continue to eat a bag of chips each day and sit on your couch all night, year after year, it will definitely have a negative impact on your health and your blood sugar will not be well controlled. But there's good news here. You can do plenty to improve your health. Just like Rachel did, right now, you can go to your cupboard and throw out all those packaged treats. Do it. Say goodbye to them forever. It may be difficult, like saying goodbye to an old friend, but these treats are not your friends. They might make you feel good for a moment, but they've spent years hurting you. Changing your eating lifestyle by consistently eating quality whole fruits and vegetables, cutting down on the cooking oils, and weaning yourself off of those large portions can lower your weight, improve your heart health, and improve your insulin sensitivity. And just like Rachel, you may find your blood sugar levels permanently dropping to below the diabetic threshold. Plus, did you know that only a half an hour of moderate exercise, and I'm not talking about going to the gym, I'm talking about just going for a 30 minute walk, that alone can have a hugely positive impact on your health. In fact, studies have shown that doing a daily half hour walk can add up to seven years to your life. Even a Mayo Clinic study revealed that brisk walks, meaning going fast enough to get your heart rate up to over 60% of your max heart rate, can add up to 20 years to your life expectancy. So, your diabetes will get worse if you let it. But you can improve your health now and forever by adopting an overall healthy lifestyle. The trick is to maintain that healthy lifestyle. Okay, so let's recap. The top seven debunked diabetes myths are, number seven, there are no early warning signs of diabetes. Number six, only people who are overweight can become diabetic. Number five, diabetics should eat sugar-free snack foods. Number four, every diabetic needs prescription insulin. Number three, diabetics should avoid all sugar. Number two, everyone should follow the same rigid diet plan. And number one, diabetes can only get worse with time. So there you go. Maybe we've dispelled some notions you assumed must be true about diabetes, but are actually pretty darn far from reality. Hopefully now the picture of what diabetes is and how you can manage it is becoming a little more clear to you. But if you want to learn a whole lot more hidden truths about diabetes and what you can do to fight and prevent this deadly disease, check out the Diabetes Smarts program. You'll discover a world of ways you and your loved ones can live happier, healthier, and longer lives. So again, and I know I sound like a broken record here, sorry about that, but definitely do yourself a favor and click the link in the description below to grab your two free gifts, superfoods for diabetics, and free access to episode one of that diabetes documentary. So you can begin your journey towards a life of better health. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. We're releasing new content each week. Until next time, have a happy and healthy day.